Hey everyone, this is Marlon, aka Marley Mac from mmcshowcase.com and today I'll be showing you how to make a tropical house type beat. Um, this type of uh, music has been popularized of late by quite a few artists including DJ Snake, Major Lazer, Justin Bieber, uh, Sean Paul, Sia and lots of other artists have been using um, that kind of uh, vibe in their music. Um, I've got a demo track that I've put together here, which is kind of very similar to DJ Snake featuring Justin Bieber's uh, Let Me Love You. Um, it's got a very similar kind of pattern going on. Um, and the aim of this is to demonstrate to you how I've actually achieved this. I'm gonna go through the various um, tracks and um, just show you the various elements that make up uh, this demo track that I've got here and um, hopefully you can take something away from that and incorporate that into your own production if you wish to make a similar kind of beat. Also, I'll be giving away a free pluck lead. Uh, I'm working in Logic today, so that would be a channel strip setting which is going to be in Logic. So you just need to open it up, save it and open it up in Logic as a channel strip setting and you'll be able to use the same pluck lead that I'm using here in this track. Um, also, if you wish to, you can get um, the project files as well as a download from my website. And what that will allow you to do is go through and see exactly how I've constructed the MIDI, all the channel strips, all the presets. It will show you exactly as it is on my screen now, how I've laid things out. And then you can go in and manipulate things and change things around and basically um, use it in your own projects, incorporate the MIDI notes, incorporate whatever aspect you want to incorporate. All the all the samples, all the sample files will be included in that package as well. Um, I've, I do have a custom drum kit that I'm using here, which I've put together myself in the ESX24, um, which is uh, Logic's sampler. So if, you, um, if you're not using Logic and you just want to grab hold of them drums, you can go ahead as well and get those separately and load them into whichever sampler you're using in whichever DAW software you've got, or you can just lay them out on audio tracks. So all the links will be in the description. Do check those out. So what I'm going to do now is just do a playthrough and let you have a quick listen to this. Alright, so that's pretty much what it sounds like. And um, so just to start with, uh, we've got that pluck lead. To start with, I've got that pluck lead here that I discussed earlier with you. This is what you'll be able to get as a download for free. Um, it has an instance of the ES2 uh, with a very basic patch in there. And then I've got some processing on here as well. So if I solo that uh, pluck lead, That's what it actually sounds like. So if I take all the processing off, so that's what it sounds like with the processing. If I play it without, it's very, very different, very different. So uh, just to walk you through and bring these in individually, I've got a EQ and EQ here, which uh, basically uh, cuts off quite a lot from the low end. 
and also a bit from the 5k or 3k mark upwards and then I've uh, boosted a couple of frequencies here in the middle um, so that actually sculpted the sound out um, to sound like this so straight away you can tell that's a bit different alright so on top of that I've got a delay And then I've got an, uh, a reverb, which gives it a bit more of a roomy feel. Let's turn this down a little bit. So I've got the uh, reverb there that gives it a bit of a roomier feel, as I was just saying. And then I've got another EQ, which cleans up, which cleans up some of the uh, elements. If I just turn that on, <laughs> there you go. All right, so that's that. So moving on swiftly, um, if I jump down a little bit down here, I've got a pad sound. Um, I'll play that back for you, for you. I'll switch this off. And this pad is just pretty much following the same kind of note chord progression that's going on here with the pluck. And um, it's an ES2, sorry, I'm on the wrong uh, channel there. It's a retro synth with a preset that comes with it called Chill Out Pad. And um, it doesn't normally sound like that. What I've done is I've added an auto filter to it. So it cuts off a lot of the high end, the high notes or the high frequency rather. So this is what it would sound like without the uh, filter. It's very bright. Okay, so that's that, and um, we'll just move back up here to the drums. I've got the kick uh, drum here, which is um, one of the kicks from my sample, my drum sample pack. And um, it's basically playing a pattern which is more or less four to the floor, but then I've got like a little groove um, towards the end of, uh, um, you know, one of the sections here. a little bit of processing going on on the kick I've got a compressor which is basically pushing it a little bit so it gives it a bit more punch uh, if I take all these uh, processing off and bring them in this is what the kick sounds like on its own the compressor kind of adds a bit more punch and then I've added an EQ I'll show you what this EQ is doing it's just pretty much scooping off a little bit from the low end could do it a little bit more actually and some of the high end as well and then I've got an overdrive which is sort of like a over a, a distortion plugin adds a bit of a grit grittier sound to it or a beefier sound so it adds a Add some bolt to it and that's pretty much that kick uh, so if we back up a little bit I've got one bass line here which uh, only plays at the intro and at like another section here um, and the reason for that is that it's got a smoother smoother feel to that bass a smoother sound to the rest uh, to the main bass which I've got in the rest of the track um, it's an ES2 with a preset of mine here as well and it's pretty much playing like a sine wave uh, if I take my loop off so that's what it sounds like and then we've got the other bass if you notice that one sounds a bit more gritty right so uh, going back up to the kicks or the kick here I've got another set of kicks down here, right? This channel is just kicks. And um, it has more of like a four to the floor kind of beat, but you're actually not hearing anything from this kick. It's affecting the bass down here to give it a more pulsating kind of effect, um, which is done via side chaining, which is quite a popular technique. 
in dance music and in many other genres. What they're actually doing is docking the uh, audio when the kick pumps and that's being done through compression. So I'll explain to you how I've uh, how this all connects up and how this works. So basically this kick, as, as I said, there's no audio coming from it. But if you look at the channel here, what I've got is a bus. So I've rooted, um, the, uh, rooted it out to a bus here, which is bus three. And bus three is then connected to an aux track, which is on the mixer. Um, so if I open up the, uh, if I open up the mixer here, you'll see that I've got this exact same track. You're looking at a copy of it here. So this aux track here, the input of it is from bus three. So this kick is sending a signal to bus three, which goes into this aux track. And then I've got no output. I've set it to no output. So you can't actually hear anything coming out from this at all. Um, where this is going to be useful is on the bass track. Um, I've got another compressor. Sorry, I've got a compressor there, which um, has a sidechain input coming from bus three. So you just go in and you select whichever bus you've got your sidechain input coming from. Uh, so you can use not just a kick, you can use a rhythm, a, an audio file or anything, any track that you wish to kind of give um, uh, to affect another sound. You can um, have the, the rhythm of it change depending on what you're sidechaining to it. So if you notice now, um, you'll see you'll see it at work when the kick comes in, comes in. If I actually turn off this kick channel here, you'll see nothing happen, happening on the sidechain or on the compressor. If I turn it back on, you'll notice there you've, you've got that pulsating sound. If you listen carefully. So that, ju that just adds to the groove of the the, the track itself. Uh, moving on swiftly, uh, one of the main elements is this uh, snare groove, what I call a snare groove. It gives you pretty much, uh, it's made up of a, uh, some, a couple of samples. It's made up of a snare and a hat. If I just get to the right, right bit here. So yeah, it's made up of a snare and a hi-hat. If I just play that back real quick. It's th these two sounds. Well, I've played them back in a way that they're all playing the same pattern in terms of the mini notes. But they complement each other because they've got various, they've got a variety of textures. They've got different textures. And um, then I'm affecting I'm adding effects to it over here um, by adding a compressor, a delay, and uh, some EQ. So if I play it without the compression and, and the rest of the plugins, this is what it sounds like. Let's take the bass off. And if I add in the, the compressor, it just pushes it a bit more. Tape delay. Give it gives it that, that groove and then the EQ I'm just chopping off the low end boosting a little bit here and there nothing complicated uh, then the next thing is let's see we've just got some snaps some finger snaps here on that I've got a compress compressor and a tape delay if I turn those off Sounds all right, but this gives it a bit more presence. I've got an EQ there, which I'm not using. Don't actually need it. So that's that. And what's the next bit? The next bit is the bright synths. So these synths are kind of like acting as a plock as well. So just adding some some more texture to the, the overall layering of the sounds, and um, they're just following the same chord progression as well. Um, then the other the other bit that's uh, more, a bit more interesting is 
I've got another snare pa snare pattern here, which is an alternative snare pattern, and then I've got like a, a roll going on. Um, so this is what uh, that section sounds like. I'll just turn turn these off. So if we have a look across here, again, some more uh, processing, a processing chain going on. So I've got uh, the compressor, which kind of brings up the sound a bit. Tape delay. You have to play around with the settings on the tape delay and dialing as much as you need to give you the right groove. Uh, then I've got a space designer, reverb. And I've got a channel EQ, cutting out some off the low end, mainly. Uh, so that's that. On this other one here, um, I'll just, just narrow that down a bit. Uh, so that sound there, towards the end, um, again, it's a couple of snares and um, there are different samples in the pack. Um, they are being affected with mainly, we're pretty much the same as the other snare, but I've got a stereo um, delay, which kind of sends a different delay to each channel or a different amount of uh, delay to each channel. I think pretty much I've uh, covered all I've got here. Uh, hopefully um, you've learnt something from this. Again, all the samples and the project files uh, as well as a free um, lead, pluck lead for Logic. So all those will be available for you to download. And um, if you do like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the, the channel to uh, see more videos um, that I will hopefully put out. Just uh, leave a comment if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments or send me a message. Hopefully I've helped someone today. So thanks for watching and take care. Peace.